This is part two of the building a lead patch in VCV rack series. As a reminder, the sound we're going for is this. In this episode, we're going to be adding some more expressiveness to our instrument by wiring up an envelope and also the modulation wheel. An envelope is what allows us to turn off the note when we're not depressing a key on the keyboard. At the moment, we have a continual sound. We need to get rid of that. To do this, we're going to introduce a new waveform. We're going to use the ADSR module, Attack, Decay, Sustain, Release. And I'm going to hook that up to a scope so we can see what it's doing. Put a multi in as well, so out there. And a scope. There. So, you can see it to begin with that the envelope is zero. That's not that useful to us, although we can wire it straight up to the volume control here, CV1 of the mixer, and now you'll see that we no longer get any sound because zero volume is zero sound. If we wire up the gate and retrig here, we'll see that when we press a button, oh, I'll need to change the timing here, we now get a new waveform that goes from zero to one with a particular shape as defined by the attack, decay, sustain, and release parameters. If I enable the sound now, it actually plays like a keyboard, which is cool. These four knobs determine the shape of this waveform. So attack is the first, how long it takes to get to the initial peak there. So if I turn that to zero, you can see it instantly goes to one. If I put it really long, it kind of swells. Now for lead instruments, you usually want quite a bit of an attack, low, high attack, sorry, low attack is more useful for pads, that sort of thing. So I'll just put it there for now. Um, sustain, we'll, we'll come back to decay. Sustain is how loud it should be just at a steady state while I'm holding it down. So let's maybe just turn that up a bit. So you can see there now it's a bit louder. I can go down to zero and now it falls off really quickly. So we'll put sustain. Uh, decay is how long it takes to get down to that midpoint. So if we have a really short decay, you can see it goes down to sustain very quickly. If we have a long decay, it's more of a fade off. You can play around with these for lead. I typically have, don't really use these that much. So we'll just say sustain and decay uh, pretty quick and sustain a pretty high percentage of attack. And then release is how long the note sticks around after you release the note. So I re release and you can see it fades off slowly. For lead instruments, you know, you want a little bit of this, but you want it to be pretty quick. So that is our attack, decay, sustain and release envelope that's currently controlling the volume of our instrument. Next, we're going to wire up our modulation wheel to control the vibrato of the sound. Vibrato is sort of a bit of a wobble in pitch. And to demonstrate what I mean by that, I'm actually going to take off the envelope we just added, so we get a constant sound, and then I'm going to wobble this fine tuning knob back and forth. That's vibrato. Now obviously that's pretty sloppy because I'm doing it with the mouse, but we're going to do that in a more controlled manner using the modulation wheel. So to begin with, we need something that wiggles. And the thing we want for that is what's called an LFO, or a low frequency oscillator. It's very, very similar to the VCO, except rather than the pitch generating frequencies of the VCO, the LFO is much slower. You can see here it's pulsing, da, 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 da. And we can wire that directly up to this FM knob here. And I'll play the sound. There you go, and it's wobbling. Now, two things here. This knob here is how much it wobbles. FMCV is the control voltage for the fine tuning. So that's nothing and that's obviously a lot. And we can also control the frequency of the vibrato. So something like that. Now, obviously this is a matter of taste. You can play around with what's good. But the problem we have at the moment is that if we hook our envelope back up. 
We've got vibrato on every note, which isn't really the effect we want. We want to be able to control this with the modulation wheel. So to wire this up, I'll get rid of the envelope again. Well, we're taking this modulation wheel output, and it's a, and we need to sort of combine it with the LFO output. We need it. So to do that, we're going to use a math module. This A times B plus C, which again isn't in the base set. It's in Bufaco. It's a free, it's a free one you can get from library managed plugins, and. What this does is just some basic math. So at times A times B plus C, we're not going to use for now. So A is going to be our modulation wheel. B is going to be our LFO. Like that. So we're going to times the modulation wheel, which is currently zero. Uh, we should see that actually. Let's add a scope. I think it's very important when you're building things is to actually make sure you can see and visualize what's going on. So there's our modulation wheel. I'll Press it in. Uh, that time is bad. There you go. So zero. Then I press it fully and I get one. Zero, one. So I can control it, waggle it in the middle. So that's what we're getting there. So we want to multiply that by our LFO, which is that. So we multiply the two together. We'll get a nice curve. So to do that, we plug them both into that. And then we take the output and let's look at it. And so to begin with, we don't get anything. And the reason we don't is because by default, the B level is set to zero. So we just need to tweak that up a little bit. And now you can see, oh, we're actually getting. So there we go. I'll tweak it. Well, actually, well, that clips if I do that. So we'll go to about there. This is with the mod wheel pushed all the way in. And so now I can sort of control some extra vibrato, some extra pitch wobble to add. So now once we've got that output, we will take that and we will run it into our FM control. And now we need to unmute. And we can control, that's probably a little excessive. Uh, so we'll turn that down a little. And we can also turn it down here. Enough. Anyway, you dial with the knobs to get what you want, but now we have the modulation wheel hooked up. We can re enable our envelope, uh, which goes from here. And now, when we play something, we can add some extra vibrato on the longer or held notes as we like using the modulation wheel. Finally, we're going to add in a little portamento or slide into our patch, which means that rather than jump directly from one pitch to the other, we'll sort of get there gracefully over time. To do this, we're going to use the slew limiter from the Bufaco patch, and I'm going to duplicate this mult so we can easily see what it's doing. So this slew limiter is actually quite complicated. Uh, it can do different glide amounts for whether you're going up or whether you're going down. Uh, we're just going to keep them the same for now. So the output of Vioct, so rather than go directly to the v, uh, the VCO, we go via this guy. And actually, I'm going to go via there so that now we have one cable we can move to sort of preview the changes, if you like. So uh, this is with. So that's pretty subtle. I'll crank it. Uh, well, actually, let's change the shape. So usually you just want a little subtle amount of this. I'll put in too much so you can hear what crazy sounds like. So that's too much, but if we put it back down to just a tasteful amount, compare that to, so it's very, just a little bit of slide just makes it a little bit tastier. To finish off, we'll just shuffle some things around to make space for part three, in which we're going to work on the timbre of our patch, adding in some more oscillators, getting some more harmonics going, and in general just getting a lot more interest happening in our sound.